Hey guys, uh, welcome, welcome to another ITL. This is going to be a little bit different. Um, I was able to snag my friend uh, Ariel Shobaz. He's right in the middle of the new Nicki Minaj album, but he's really uh, been kind enough to give us a little bit of time. We're going to discuss the massive worldwide hit. When I say worldwide, I'm not exaggerating. That thing is like, I, know, I will talk to Ariel, but I know it's, a, it's, it's been top five forever worldwide, but Anyway, uh, Ariel's going to go through with us and uh, describe some of the things he did on Super Bass. What's up, Ariel? Hey, Dave. How are you? Uh, man, so I remember you and I were talking like a month ago, and you were like number three or four in the world. Did you did did you make it to number one in the world? I don't think we made it to number one, but we were that close, man. Uh, hopefully, on this next album, that's the goal. Uh, how's how's the new album sounding? I bet it's amazing. Incredible. Um, you know, we're, we're going uh, with, with more songs that are written, um, and so we have some absolute smashes lined up uh, that JR produced. Dr. Luke is, is going to be heavily involved. So it's going to be a massive album. Wow. Um, don't, give any, don't give any secrets away, but some pretty cool uh, features? Yes, yes, some very cool features. Oh, man, I can't wait, can't wait. Well, let's jump right in, man. Um, uh, I remember you and I were talking about Super Bass, um, a while back before it was a single that was that's always been my favorite song on the on the first album you you put your foot in that thing was there any pressure in mixing a song called super bass i mean you kind of had you kind of had to have super bass you know what i'm saying yes yeah that was <laughs> you can't have it be called super bass and have no bass for sure and, and fortunately you know the way that song came together um it was produced by Kane Beats, and, and he had a lot of real heavy synths in there. And, that, and the song was actually written around the fact that it was so bass heavy to begin with. So it made my job a little easier, fortunately. Yeah, plus you, you, uh, all, uh, 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 all of the songs that you mix and almost all the songs on the album, you tracked too, right? On the last album and on this new album that's about to come out, you, you tracked everything, right? Exactly, which, which really helped to keep the visions together that the producer, the writer, and, and Nikki and I had. Um, we were able to keep everything under the same, you know, roof basically because we're all in the same room recording, mixing, and then with the mastering process, we we're the same group of people there together too, and and we were able to really make sure our vision made it to the final product. Let's jump right in, man. On the kick, you 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 did some parallel stuff on the kick, right? Correct, correct. And, and I know you you stress uh, the parallel compression a lot. I don't think any of us can stress it enough. How important it is um, to have parallel compression when you need it in your mixes. You like the the twenty five hundred API? Yeah, that that was able, you know, because because what I tried to do with the parallel compression was really get the attack um, to jump through because it was a heavy bass heavy track. We needed it to to jump through the speakers, and so um, the 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 Puig Tech the um, you know, when I EQ'd it, it's, it's really boosting the top end and pulling all the low end out of the kick. So it doesn't sound like much of a kick. You're attenuating a lot at 100. Yeah, I'm trying to just bring that top end out. And then the API, what I was able to do is, um, you know, you can even use the, the bass drum preset and tweak from there. And it gives you a really nice, sharp compression that, that allows it to pop really nicely out of the track. I love that. I love that compressor. And then on the claps, which are coming up now... Um, you use Smack, which has always been one of my favorites. I noticed you in the side chain you're using a peak, and then um, yeah. uh, same thing. This this is the parallel chain, right? Exactly. Where the original claps were not touched, and then this would be the parallel compression that I use. And then um, you were telling me earlier that that you've probably changed music as we know it with these hi hats. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like, guys, he was, he was saying, I didn't do much to the hi-hat, so I had, you know. It's my yeah, it's a real simple EQ. Um, you know, if you watch the first episode, you know, I talked about using plugins that were low latency and really good quality. Um, and, and so I can't stress how, how great these MIG DSP EQs are. And, um, you know, you can see it. It's a real simple EQ on the hi-hat, but, again, it, it's super low latency with great results. Here again, the reason you had to do so little is because you recorded the original, so you did all the heavy lifting when you were tracking. So Exactly. So um, that's, that's an asset. Uh, bass, um, what's going on with the bass? I mean, it's, it's super bass. How would you get it super? 
Well, to, um, you know, it's, it's the R base, which I think a lot of people have access to, and it is a sub base. And what I did is I added rather, rather than trying to EQ it in, you know, I used the R base to synthesize, um, all the way down at 42 Hertz. So you can see, um, you know, it, it's not mixed in barely, very heavily because it was a sub base to begin with, but this exaggerated it and, and really pushed the subs, um, and kind of underneath the cross point of where, uh, normal speakers would crap out, but this would still hit the subs. So oh, that's good. That's good. So you, you were actually checking it periodically on, on smaller speakers, and then, of course, you work in the nicest studios yeah. in the world. You did this at, uh, over at Kit's place, right? Glenwood Place? Yeah, this was done at Glenwood, correct, in Studio C. Oh, see. And then um, something rather unique. Um, this looks like a... Um, this almost looks like somebody photoshopped this. Um, <laughs> on, on the sense, you you went out of your way to to get things wide. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different. Uh, what's the word? Will instantiations? Is that the way you say it? Instances. Well, I'll take instances. <laughs> I like <laughs> instantiations, instances of uh, uh, S one. Uh, yeah, well, and to give credit where credit's due, Kane, Kane Beats, um, you know, used this on a couple tracks, and, and I really liked what it was doing, and so I kind of took his idea and ran with it, and as you can see, yeah, we used it on basically every single synth in the song, uh, and it's part of the reasons why it's so wide and has such a cool sound, and one of the, the cool things about these imagers is, rather than panning something from left to right and losing some of that image, you can actually turn down or turn up the left or right channel and adjust the width with this imager um, and, and really get some cool, unique sounds that you couldn't get just by panning and volume alone. And, and they're definitely worth trying out um, whenever you have something you want to widen. Man, it's, it just looks good. It just, it just looks good. It's, it's incredible that, that... I think you ought to turn that into a T-shirt or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the sound was really cool. And that's one of the things I'm most proud of on, on Super Bass is, is how wide it is. And, and I, I think the next photo we're going to pull up um, is probably just the most simple stereo widener you can imagine, which I use on the main ARP synth. It's the main sound you hear through the whole song. Uh, and that It really stands out. And part of the reason it stands out um, is because of the widening that I did. And, and this is something, it's a plugin everyone has. It's just a standard short delay. And Dave, I'm sure you use this all the time. I probably picked it up. I don't know you. if you. I don't know if you remember, but like in '92, I invented this. Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't even you know plug in was in '92, but <laughs> you know what? Uh, I can't take credit for anything you do, man. You uh, you took you took what you got from me and just made it 100 percent your own. And 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 because you're so musical, everything you do is musical. Well, thank you. And it, this is one of those things that, that I think anybody watching has to try if they haven't done it before. It is taking that short delay. You know, you can see the settings. Probably saying that it's basically a zero delay on one side. You're not using any depth or any rate to add modulation to the sound. It's strictly using it to delay the right side anywhere from 10 to 20 milliseconds from the left channel. And if it's a mono sound, it can work even better. Use a mono to stereo plug-in and just A, B bypassing it and just you can hear how wide it instantly makes it just by doing that simple little trick and it's one of my favorite things i use it all the time when i need anything to be wider yeah i, I agree it's a great trick okay now we're moving on to nikki's lead vocal mm -hmm. um and these are laid out in in the order that they came up in the session you know so you can see the chain and um you know i think you've talked about in the show before I usually do cuts before compression and boosts afterwards, and, and I completely agree with you. And, you know, I did some cuts on the EQ after the compression, but the main roll-off that I did was before the compression, so all that low-end information isn't triggering the compressor. Yeah, um, I, I love then, Arvox. It, Arvox doesn't get talked about a lot, but that's a great plug-in. It, it, it's not fancy, so I don't think people like to talk or even brag about it, but it's one of those go-to plugins for me, especially when, when I'm tracking, that gets the vocals right where I need them to be. Um, and surprisingly, they get used in post a lot. Uh, a lot of people don't know that I do do some post work. And um, 
the Coke Zero commercial for the Super Bowl last year, all the vocals were done using our Vox to get them right at the, the level we needed. And, it, you know, it works great for post and it works great for, you know, lead vocals. Um, you know, again, if, it, if it's recorded well, it works incredibly great. Yeah, of course, you recorded this vocal. Well, man, I'm just studying this. The, the, the vocal sounded so good. In a minute, we're going to talk about some of the effects on the vocal. Then I got, we've got, um, oop, nothing happened. Oh, there we go. That's the backgrounds. Yes, I have some backgrounds here. And again, fairly, fairly simple. You know, if you record a tape with a really good sound, it doesn't take that much to get it sounding great. And um, the, the background vocals were recorded by Aubrey Delane, well, otherwise goes by Big Juice. He did a great job recording the backgrounds, um, and he used the mic chain setup that I had. And I, I tweaked his, his presets a little bit, but you can see it's pretty basic because of, of the great sound we got. And again, we used a, a 1073 mic pre through two tech CL1B compressor and, and just made sure that the live room was perfect every time. That was for tracking. I noticed you got a, a ratio of nine. Was that, was that, was that what he gave you, or, was, or did you choose that higher ratio for a reason? He had it set pretty damn high, and I, and I kept it up there. Uh, you know, everything was tweaked a little bit, but that was one of those things because we, we compressed a tape so well that this was really to just catch those little peaks and... and uh, you know, you have a trick also of, I think, going even higher. Yeah, I do 50. 50? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get a great sound. Really I know. Sound. Especially with that plug-in, there's something about the attack and release on that plug-in that you can get so musical. Like, right. like it's, it's my go-to plug-in for um, side-chaining it, like dance music and stuff. I, I love that yeah. plug-in. So um, on, the, uh, on the bridge, you did some pretty unique things on the bridge of this song, if I recall. Yeah, for the, for the bridge, uh, you can see it's not a very, again, it's not a fancy EQ, but, um, you know, just some, some little tricks of cutting where the exact frequencies um, that were just kind of jumping through. And, you know, if you bypass it, it's, it's not changing the sound of the vocal too much because of how tight these cues are. But if you crank it in the club, it, it addressed the few frequencies that were coming through when she sings that were a bit harsh. And, and you know, you, you and I use a trick of, of sometimes uh, using a sidechain compressor to address that. And in this situation, it sounded better for me to do these really tight, thin cuts. And you can see I'm cutting by uh, 10 and 11 dB on, was it 1900 and 3100 hertz? Yeah. But they're, they're such tight cues that it didn't, it didn't affect the presence of her voice, but address those frequencies. And so I guess what I'm saying is you don't be afraid to do cuts that drastic if you need it. And in this is one of those situations where I needed it. Yeah, you've got, you've got that perfect pitch thing going on. So you, I, 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 I would bet if we looked these up, these would be actual note values, the way your hearing <laughs> works, you know? Exactly. Um, I can't wait to check these reverbs out. All right, this is a, a, real, a real simple, you know, one of the reverbs I used on the vocals. Um, we used a few, and I think I've talked about before, one of my favorites is TL Space. But, but this is actually, you know, my go-to reverb chain for, for just getting any song going. And, of course, you know, the pre-delay and, and the decay times all match the tempo of the song, which is something you taught me and is an incredible tool for, for having everything feel in sync. Um, and, and what's cool is with, with this, to get the expensive sound, I cut 10 dB at, at 1200 hertz. And what that does is it allows the reverb to flow without cluttering up the mix because, you know, the vocals sit really heavily. Yeah, and yeah, so instead of duplicating more of that frequency, which takes up so much of the space, you pulled it out. Good job, man. Exactly. So However, really I would have used, you used a 29.5 pre-delay. I think I would have gone with a 29.4. But, but you know what? It wouldn't have been in time. <laughs> <laughs> you would have heard it too. I know you would. <laughs> no, I couldn't. You would have been like, "Why is that off?" Man, you know what? Though this is a good time to take a minute and and um, several people like like Alex Akim, who's on the show, Phil Tan, um, um, Brian Kennedy, uh, and even uh, Greg Wells. People I respect so much. They all talk about the need to limit the, the tools you have. When you have too many tools, 
you, you don't use any of them very well. When you limit yourself to a handful of tools, you get the maximum usage out of them. Do you find that that, that, that austerity is actually contributing to your creative process rather than having like, I, I know you have access to every plugin ever made, but, yeah. but, but the austerity, the, 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 the limiting yourself, um, like Mike Dean said the same thing too with Kanye, is there's something about having just what you need and, and making that work and really working, like, like I can see you massage just about everything on this plugin, you know, I mean, it's not anything random there going on. Exactly, exactly. And, and I mean, these are, these are plugins, you know, they're, they've been around forever. And, you know, part of the reason I was so excited to talk about this mix was because they're, they're plugins that everyone has access to, you know, of course, yeah, I mean, you have access to so many really cool plugins, as well as SSL consoles, million dollar studios that, that most people don't have access to. And these were one of those mixes where I really relied on the basics that I knew extremely well. I wasn't experimenting with anything that I, I didn't really know about. I just went to the go-to stuff I knew how to manipulate to get exactly what I wanted. Yeah, uh, that's, that's going to upset a few people because I remember when I first moved to L.A. and I, I, I really kind of sucked as an engineer. My most sad, disappointing day was when I realized there wasn't a magic piece of gear that everybody had that I didn't have back when I was in Atlanta. And I had to learn how to, how to actually engineer at that point in time. It was not a fun day for me. I hope we don't ruin too many people's days today. Um, the master bus, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what you did on that. It's, it's very subtle, but the, the linear phase EQ is, is one of those EQs that it, it eats up a ton of processing. But it's, it reminds me of the, the GML EQs and... and um, you know, just the phase alignment is so tight. You know, when, when you have a mix where you want it, the last thing you want is, is to boost something and have it be off time, even slightly from the low end, which can make it not punch as hard. So stereo bus, I only use the linear phase EQ. This, this is a very subtle boost, uh, you know, just to bring a little more presence to the mix. Very, very subtle. Um, let, let, me, but, uh, let me interject here. Some of, the, some of the guys that aren't too experienced yet a half a dB across a, an entire mix is completely different than a half a dB on a single kick drum. It's yes. It's like like three like 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 three dB on a kick drum is the same as a half a dB on the whole mix. When you're working across the whole mix, um, exactly. those numbers really translate differently, don't they? It really does, and, and yeah, half a dB doesn't seem like much, but you know, boosting one dB was way too much. <laughs> it wasn't enough. I mean, it's really one of those things when, when you get that close to being finished with the mix, it, it's drastic how, how these subtle things make a difference. And, and you didn't put any compression, you just left that for mastering? I left that for mastering, yes. I, I do, when I am mixing, um, which, which is something that a lot of people watching can try doing at home, is usually when I'm about halfway through a mix, I'll actually put mastering plugins on my master bus. Um, so I'm kind of mixing into my mastering suite. Then when it goes to mastering, I remove all those plugins, but I'm mixing, knowing, I'm mixing into the mastering suite so I know what it's going to sound like when they touch it. And of course, they can do a better job than I do, but at least I'm, I'm able to mix with that in mind, which is pretty cool. Ariel, right, I, I'm, 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 I apologize. I, I, I wanted to talk about the delays, and I think I skipped over them. Can, uh, can we go back to the uh, 16th note delay that you put on Nikki? Yeah, this is this is one of the delays, and um, you know, it's it's again, this is in the order that they were, uh, you know, on on the auxiliary track, and you can see, you know, the the frequencies being automated on the filter, the, um, also the reverb which is Dverb, which, again, it's one of those cheap plugins all of us have, and it, it works great on certain things. I, I love it on snares. Yeah, you know what Dverb stands for, right? <laughs> Dylan Verb. Dylan Verb. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, him and Will I am love Dverb. I shouldn't even get said that. <laughs> but they do love Dverb, and it works great for certain things, and, and, you know, for delay returns, I love it, and... You know, this was one of those things where you can mess around with, with uh, Echo Boy or Echo Farm or any of those, and, and you can get really cool stuff. But I knew exactly what I wanted. And yeah, I know. I noticed you 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 were trying to emulate like an old tape analog reverb by rolling everything uh, below 4K off. I mean, exactly, exactly. And, and by automating that, it gave the delays a little bit more texture. Where 
as the delays would go on, it would slowly filter down. And as well with the uh, with repeat the that. Repeat that. That's cool. I like. I repeat that. That's neat. So but, so so you took the time as as the delay as like bah, as that decayed, you would you would take more high end off. Yes, so it's it's constantly rolling off the high end for each delay. Oh hit. man, that's that's my idea now. <laughs> as well the, as, as, well as wait, adding wait, reverb that makes Wait for my reverb. sound on the sound article where I claim I did that. Perfect. <laughs> man, that's a great idea. I love it. I love it. Well, man, um, I, I I'd love to talk to you some more, but you've given me so many new ideas. I feel like, like I want to go start a mix right now. So. Uh, <laughs> right. Congratulations on the platinum record above your uh, left shoulder. There, you, you right. really des you really earn and deserved uh, that record, man. You 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 really you really uh, helped Nikki get a record that she can be totally proud of and totally represents her in every way. You know, I mean that was a I don't know if there's been a a, a record that highly anticipated since the Snoop album. You know. That had to be a lot of pressure for both you guys, and you guys came through like crazy. Ton of pressure, and, and you know, we we've broken several records worldwide for a female rap artist, and you know, the next album we're starting now is going to be even bigger. Man, so. I hope so. Ari, right, you know I love you, man. Good luck, and I can't wait to hear the I can't wait to hear um, the new record. Will you Will you let us know when it when it hits the stores? Of course, of course, you'll get the sneak peek. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, thank you again, Ariel, and I'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thanks, Dave. Okay, guys, man, what a blast hanging out with Ariel. I'm uh, uh, I'm amazed with what he's been doing. Listen, uh, Ariel reminded me that um, go back and check out episode one because a lot of the things he gave you the details on what he did on episode one, he, he goes into a little depth on why he did certain things, so... Check out our very first episode, Ariel, the very first show we ever did was our first guest. And I hope you guys had as much fun as I had. I, I, I can't wait to get, get, uh, get started on the mix I'm working on today. I'm going to rip off Ariel on a couple of these ideas. So anyway, uh, let us know what you think and uh, keep those cards and letters coming. Back to you, Dave.